It's cringy time. Welcome back to Fog Wrestling here for an early morning Smackdown review. Well, I say early morning. It's actually it's actually the afternoon, right? But you know what? It doesn't matter. Afternoon, morning, noon and night. It doesn't matter when you tune in, right, to this show or tune into these reviews. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be bored. You're going to just not have a good show. God help anybody that still enjoys this, man. Honestly, because seriously, like, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life, Hermano? Because this show didn't deliver. A lot of hype going into Roman Reigns tonight, returning. He came back last week on SmackDown. Like, see it. Why, why we, like, the actual preview point for this show is that Roman Reigns returns. He returned last week. I don't get it. Anyway, it's the Nia Jax Championship celebration. Tiffany, you know, looking good. Out comes Nia Jax being wheeled. I repeat, wheeled to the ring because for whatever, well, I'll say for whatever reason, we all know the reason. There's no there's no four men strong enough to carry Nia Jax to the ring. That's pretty much the reason. Um, yeah, they're brilliant. Oh, you know, you know, Tiffany, you're, you're brilliant. Um, it's just fucking garbage, isn't it? You get pretty deadly out there. Oh, bow down to me. Oh, we're going to bow down after they sing their song. Um, so they, they do a musical number. Oh, Naya, you're the queen. Yeah, yeah, this is Smackdown. Hey, queen. Whatever, I don't even know what they were talking about, man. Absolute cringe. Then Mi Chen. Mi Chen, folks. Mi Chen comes down by the ring and just batters them all and starts spanking pretty deadly with the, the, the kendo stick. I, this is one of the worst openings I've ever seen. Honestly. Like, I think this had potential, this celebration, but pretty deadly singing, me chin, battering, four on one. I, I can't stand me chin, man. Oh, I, I seriously, seriously can't. Absolutely, uh, uh, absolutely awful. Just absolutely horrendous, man. There, there's no toys about it. This, this was fucking garbage. What an awful way to kick off the show. And I wouldn't be surprised if this just killed the ratings. Talking of killing the ratings, we cut backstage. Naomi's talking to Bel Air and Cargo. Bel Air looking like a two dollar hooker. Um, oh, I'm going to drag Blair Davenport around tonight. Yeah, we're going to do that. Yes, Queen. Just fucking cringe, man. Honestly, like the first twenty minutes of this show is like women, and then two gay guys. Brilliant. Then. Big Mello appears out of nowhere. It's like, ah, who's coming to my after party when I beat Mello? Uh, when I beat Andrade? And then Jade's like, well, you haven't beat him already. He's got two dubs against your two L's. And Mello's like, you still watch the match? Oh, he's flirting with him. Oh, yeah. And you know what I'm flirting with? A blade into my wrist because up next it's Carmelo Hayes taking on Andrade El Idiol. A match that just... You know, honestly, the, the the first 45 minutes of this show was what we've already talked about in this match. Does no one see a problem with that? Like, look how... And there was about two ad breaks during this match. Yeah, brilliant. Carmelo Hayes wins. He, he, he shouldn't have two L's on his record to Andrade. Andrade's a guy that's been tried and tested. Crossed WWE previously. He was a bot, He was a flop in AEW. He came back to WWE. He came in at number four at the Rumble. And he, and he fell on his arse. Absolutely fell on his arse. Uh, Tammy Tonga then is backstage. He hands over the Ola Fala to Solo Sokoa. And when Roman Reigns gets here in that ring, Tammy says, I'm going to rip my apart. Solo appreciates that and says, no, if he does do that, then I'm going to rip him apart. But if he takes this off my neck, then he's the tribal chief again. It's like, Really? So you're just going to, he, he sticks a couple of flowers on his neck and you're going to turn around and say, well, that's it. That's my entire history since mania down the drain. All right, there. All right, sir. You do that. You do that. Giovanni Finch and I cut a promo. I'm going to conquer Smackdown. Show the world what I'm all about. Victory. Naomi loses to Blair Devonport. Brilliant. Just fucking awful. Look, I mean, look look at the matches I'm talking about here. And near enough, the first R of this show. 
just absolutely shit. Grayson Waller then comes out, he's like, I didn't appreciate you throwing me under the bus last week, but you know what? Let's bar Kevin Owens tonight, and then Kevin Owens is actually standing right behind him, and he's like, oh, that match is next. Who will win between Kevin Owens and Grayson Waller? Huh, I wonder who. I wonder who. Uh, there was a moment of silence for Dowdy Rebbe Hall of Famer Alpha of the Wild Simones, who unfortunately passed yesterday, but obviously during the show it was the day of the show. And we already made a fed on it, you know, because Dave Meltzer falsely claimed that the guy had died a day earlier than he died. Dave Meltzer's just a scumbag, man. He's a fuck. He's a sad little fucking mark that has probably never had his hole. I mean, that pretty much sums up Dave. Honestly, man, just speculating that a guy's dead before he's dead, that's the lowest of the low, especially for a guy that's, you know, supposed to be, you know, the, one of the most decorated reporters in wrestling history. He's a, he's a loser. He's an absolute loser to the highest degree. He doesn't even fucking apologise for his actions. just turns around and says... Correction, <laughs> you know, you know, correction would be something like, oh, uh, Seth Rollins is going to be wearing white tonight, and then he comes out dressed in black. Oh, correction, it's actually black. That's a correction, not not saying some guy's dead and it turns out he's live. Mental. Kevin Owens though, he defeats Grayson Waller. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So Sokoa then tells Tommy Tonga that Roman Reigns need to acknowledge him tonight. Pretty much what he said earlier on the night, like earlier on the night. Don't get it. Then we had the Legado del Fantasma vignette. Oh, brilliant. Champing at the bit for that. LA Knight comes out. Just calls a just cuts a very generic promo. And this this guy's stock has plummeted, man. This guy was so over like 18 months a year ago, two years ago. And that's what happens when you don't pull the trigger early. And it will happen with everyone. It just sucks. Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. Thank Meechin for ruining the championship celebration. Meechin will now be getting a women's championship opportunity. But then Chelsea's not happy about that. Nia Jackson attacks Meechin from behind. And Nick tells Nia to back off. Don't do it. Number one contenders match with DIY against the Street Profits. Another match that just went on far too long. This match was about 20 odd minutes long, man. You know, obviously you're including commercials and all in there, but geez, oh. Street Profits win. Absolutely the correct decision. Absolutely. It was then announced for the next week that LA Knight would be putting his United States Championship on the line. Line, everybody knows what's the no. Against Santos Escobar, Bianca Belair, and Shade Gargo, Naomi would be colliding with Blair Devonport, the Unholy Union, the bloodline would face the Street Profits for the WWE Tag Team Championships. It's like, but, you know, at least they're giving you a tag title match, but, like, I don't know what we're doing there. Personally. Anyway, it's a, it's a segment that everyone's talking about. I say everyone's talking about. It's Roman Reigns in the bloodline segment. Solo comes out. Orlando. Acknowledge me. Okay, I see how it is, Orlando. You don't want to acknowledge me, fine. I know one man who needs to acknowledge me. Roman Reigns, you call yourself the Tribal Chief or the OTC, whatever the hell that is. If you want this Ula Fala back, then bring your ass out here and try to acknowledge me. He then gives the Ula Fala to Tammy Tonga. So Roman Reigns can't take it. They then start brawling. Um, Reigns starts clearing the announce table. Looks like he's going to put Tonga through it. But then... The other members come out of the bloodline. They start battering Roman Reigns. They do the, the Cerebrus Powerbomb bloodline manoeuvre <laughs> through the announce table. Then gets dragged back into the ring. Tonga puts the Ulafala back over Soul's head. Bloodline stands tall over Roman Reigns as the show goes off the air. Oh, but this is great. And what is this? this is probably Roman Reigns right off TV for another six weeks, right? And I get it. You know, he's lost his dad recently. And he's now lost his uncle. I think the bloodline will probably have a lot of funerals to attend and things like that. But in terms of, like, the booking, like, what are we doing? Like, it just feels so... How many times is the bloodline going to whip out this triple powerbomb for the announce table? That was the Shields thing about 12 years ago. You know what I mean? Mental, to say the least. Anyway, this show is... This show is fucking... Awful. You can bring Roman Reigns back all you want. Where's Cody? Fucking nowhere. Guy sucks. Fucking glad he's not even on the show, to be honest. He might have got a zero if he was on it, but it's going to get a one. Smackdown troops. Just not very good. Has to be said. 